Hello everybody, welcome to part 18 of Machine Learning for the Use of Algorithmic Trading. Where we left off in the last video, I just uh, bring up more variables and more problems with as we continue uh, on this journey together. Um, but we left off with the idea that you know, let's go ahead and actually do some back testing and see if it's really worth our time. Because some of those uh, hurdles coming up, uh, we need to decide whether or not it's worth our time and energy to continue. So uh, let's begin building the back test. The first thing that we really want to do in this back test is we don't need to be displaying graph anymore. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of all this graphing stuff. So everywhere we see something that's related to drawing a graph, we're just going to comment it out. So the first spot, if pat, uh, pat found equals one, comment that out. Next part, or well, comment, comment the figure part out. Don't comment if pat found. <laughs> anyway, um, comment that part out. Next, comment out this plot here. Comment out plot here. Continue scrolling. Comment out, comment out. Comment out, comment out, comment out, comment out. And that should come out everything, because we're not calling, um, oops, where have I gone? Uh, we're not calling graph FX, so we don't need to comment this stuff out. So that should be everything that we're graphing. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to develop a back test. So to do the back test, we need a few things, right? We need to know are we accurate or not. And then also we need to store that kind of like an array, right? Or keep track of it, right? Did we, were we accurate or not? Yes or no. And then um, as time goes on, how many samples have we done? And then, uh, you know, how many times were we accurate divided by how many samples we have? And boom, you've got yourself in a percentage accuracy. So uh, let's begin building for that. So looking at this, a few of the things that we could stand to move are the following. We can move, um, I'm still thinking now. We want average line there, but we can take out, uh, let's just take out pattern storage, and we can run that once all the way through so we didn't have to do that every time if we wanted. Um, we could take out and move a few things instead of running it every time. That would kind of help processing time. I can't really decide if I really want to do that, but if you did, you could move some of these things out to be global. And then, so like if you did, you know, you could run it like every day, run, and compare uh, patterns and store patterns. Uh, but I think what I'll probably do in the future is maybe just have like a pattern storage script that you just run it every now and then, stores all the patterns, and then you visit that those patterns. But I guess for now, for the back tester, we could just leave this in here and let's just build what we need for the back test. So a couple things, let's make an accuracy array, and that'll be empty to start. And then let's make a SAMPS, and that'll be also empty to start, of course. And every time this runs, we have another sample. So we'll just say down here, SAMPS plus equals one. And uh, so we know like how many samples we actually ran through. Now, the next thing we want to do, even though this wouldn't really necessarily be um, trade worthy, but anyways, um, next thing that we want to do is come up to our actual graphing. And I think the best way to do this, see it's going to be kind of hard because here we need to do it for each pattern and then down here, we kind of need this stuff in the order without changing up a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to kind of work around that I guess. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll come over here, uh, indent, and then we'll say pred array. And that's going to be an empty array. So pred array for prediction. Sorry, I hit the mic. Prediction array. And now what we'll do is as we come down here, if the color is, um, so like if it's greater, that means this color was green And for anybody that forgot. So positive. Our prediction will be, uh, we'll just say that's one for up, right? And then we'll come down here. Oops. Come down here, and if the color is red, then we want to append uh, pred array dot append a negative one point zero zero zero. This way, when we do the averaging, it'll uh, automatically do decimals for us. Then, after that, we want to do. 
I guess we're done there. The next thing that we want to do is after this for loop, right? Now we want to do, um, so in line with all of this stuff, we want to do some stuff. So first, let me just delete. I can't decide if I want. I guess, yeah, we'll just delete this. Um, now what we'll do is let's, just to make sure that we actually are, uh, are on the right track, we'll go ahead and print the prediction array just so we can see it visually. Because when you start doing stuff like this, you might think you're expecting some something specific in here. And that way, if something's going wrong, you can just look at it and be like, oh, well, that's not what I wanted at all. So now what we will do is print prediction or uh, make a prediction average. And again, we're going to use this uh, lovely, lovely function that we created for ourselves. And come back over here. Prediction average equals ready. And we're going to use pred array in the variables here. So pred array and pred array. Now, so that'll be the average of all the predictions. So it'll either be above zero or below zero as an average, right? So now we'll say print prediction average just to make sure we're on the right track. And then we'll say if prediction prediction average is less than zero, that means print drop predicted, right? Subsequently, uh, let's print pat for rec 29. So the last plot in the pattern, where is that? Now print real movement. Keep in mind, real movement was percent change from um, all data, that last point in the plot, to the actual outcome. So what is, so we've got our prediction is to drop, then we want it to print out the last point, then we want to print out what was the actual movement, so we can see visually whether or not a drop actually occurred. Subsequently, if real movement is indeed under pat for rec 29, congratulations, accuracy array append 100, you know, we're 100% accurate, else accuracy array append zero. Next up, we got to do the other side of the equation. So if prediction uh, average is greater than zero, print rise predicted. Yes. Now we want to do the same thing. And actually, um, let's save ourselves our fingers and copy paste. And the only thing we really need to change is the following, that. So it's probably a good idea to go ahead and check your accuracy. And so if prediction average is above zero, that does mean a rise. And we just want to print the variables just to make sure we're doing it right and logically. If real movement actually does indeed, uh, is indeed higher than that last plot, so our prediction turned out to be accurate, we want to say that specific actual, uh, uh, prediction was accurate, continue. So it adds that to the accuracy array, which we just made down here. It's empty, but it, it will get populated with either 100s or zeros. And now if we come down to the bottom here, this means under all of this, we can now say print, and we can say back tested accuracy is comma string accuracy average plus a little percent sign, because we're awesome. Oh, and then we'll say after, comma, samps, um, samples. So that is exactly what they are. Um, OK. I think that's it. We might have had a typo somewhere. We did a lot of edits and stuff. You always run the risk. We've been doing pretty good lately, so we're definitely coming up on an error soon. So anyway, we'll run it. And I think we actually have that press enter to can Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, that's another thing we want to remove from uh, our script so we can actually run this and walk away So because we, we'd kind of like to run it for a while um, so pattern storage we could probably delete that too but that's okay um, just kind of waiting for a response 1-1 um, rise predicted and uh, looks like it was good but we're not for whatever reason entire process oh I guess it's 
Okay, print enter. Back test accuracy and accuracy average is not defined. I swear we define this. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Okay, I thought we had defined it, but I guess not. So what we need to do is another one of those sexy lambda equations. So let's go ahead and take this and copy, come over, and we're going to do accuracy average equals paste. And in here, we actually want to be accuracy array. Where is that? Here it is. Accuracy array, accuracy array. And let's go ahead and uh, remove, move on. Run this again. Let me drag this down. And we wait. Suspense is killing me, guys. Okay, with one uh, sample, we're so far 100% accurate. So I'm going to pause this for a little bit and run, let it run through a few. Okay, well, after 12 samples here, uh, we're still running at 100% accuracy. In theory, we should eventually hit something that's incorrect. But anyways, um, what I'll do here is I'm going to show you guys now what I've been running uh, this back test against uh, a lot more data for a lot more samples. And I've got about, one of them is going very slow and only has 570. The other ones are about 900 samples and at different intervals within. So uh, here is an example of the accuracy. I think it's uh, pretty good. Everyone is at least over uh, 50%, so that's always nice to see. So anyway, uh, let me pause this and I'll resume the video over then. All right, this is... Um, eight different scripts that were started at different points. Uh, I did, I think, it was like 35,000 you know, 35, uh, lines in, 37,000 lines in, 40,000 lines in, 42,000 lines in, and so on. Um, so anyway, uh, this first one is through 915 different tests is 57% accuracy. Um, it's had kind of a string of zeros lately. It used to be, it started off very accurate, and then I guess it's gone south. Uh, this one has 76% accurate, had a nice string of 100s there. Um, this one 72, 74, 64, 58, 88, and this one a freaking awesome 98%. Wow. Anyway, um, so that's that, and it's on against, you know, about, let's see, we got 900 times 8. Minus about 400 since the other one's running really slow. So really about 6,800 samples so far. And we have, I guess I could run that math real quick too. Let me pause it while I run that, uh, the average accuracy here. Okay, so our average accuracy is 73.5. So that's pretty impressive if you ask me. I'm pretty happy about that accuracy. So anyway, that's going to conclude... Uh, video, what is this, 18? Hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, the series so far. Uh, it looks like uh, we've got a pretty good pattern recognition with pretty darn good accuracy as far as prediction in the future is concerned. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.